Hello and welcome to this TAFCOM training podcast. My name is Andy Muscle and I'm one of the TAFCOM tutors. I normally deliver the practical CCTV courses at the TAFCOM training centre. This short podcast is about CCTV cameras. It's a typical sample of the type of material we would cover on our three-day foundation CCTV course or the more in-depth five-day practical CCTV course. So let's begin. The camera is right at the heart of any CCTV system. It is the device that converts the light from a scene into a video signal for transmission to another device. The other device could simply be a monitor to display the images, but more likely to be a recording system of some kind. Over the years, we have seen a progressive movement away from standard definition to high definition CCTV. The manufacturer of standard definition analog products has all but ceased now, but the route to HD isn't always as simple as it seems. Choices have to be made about the type of camera and technology we want to use, how the video is going to be transmitted, how the video is going to be viewed, and of course, how the images are going to be stored. I want to talk about the evolution of CCTV cameras, camera image sensors and sizes, camera types, and we'll also be talking about the different camera technologies that are available today. Starting off with the camera evolution. Originally, all CCTV cameras were known as tube cameras. They were manufactured in one inch, two third and half inch formats. They were replaced by solid state image sensors, which were and still are available in half inch, but more commonly manufactured now as third, quarter and one 2.7 inch. Solid state image sensors can either be CCD, which is a charged coupled device, or CMOS, which is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Standard definition analog, high definition analog, and IP cameras will all use one of these devices. Both CCDs and CMOS sensors do the same thing in as much as they produce an electrical signal in response to the light falling on them. CCD sensors have been around for a long time and produce high quality, low noise images, but they require a special manufacturing process, which makes them a little bit more expensive to produce. CMOS sensors are much cheaper to produce and require far less power, but they are a little bit more sensitive to noise. Most of the 4x3 aspect ratio analog cameras tended to use CCDs. Most of the 16 by 9 aspect ratio HD analog cameras and IP cameras tend to use CMOS sensors. The image sensor sizes. We still refer to image sensor sizes as an imperial measurement for historical reasons. Whilst the outer diameter of the original video tube was one inch, the actual light sensitive area was much smaller, as you'll see in the following slide. These days we tend to use the term optical format rather than image sensor size. So a one inch video tube would produce a light sensitive area of 12.8 by 9.6 millimeters, giving us a diagonal of 16 millimeters. Then we had two thirds of an inch tubes, then we had half inch tubes, but about that time we changed to solid state image sensors. And we had a third inch. The four examples here are all shown as a four by three aspect ratio. But of course these days, a lot of our image sensors are 16 by nine in a widescreen format. Camera types. A box camera. Traditionally, all of our cameras were box cameras. They looked a bit like this example here. You bought the camera, it didn't have a lens on it, and you chose the lens that you wanted. This gave us a very flexible choice of lenses, but it did introduce a lot of camera lens compatibility issues. And of course, if you wanted to put it outside, you'd require a housing to protect it from the elements. Bullet cameras. With a bullet camera, the camera and lens is integrated, so there's no compatibility issues between the camera and the lens. We can have fixed or very focal lens options. Internal and external versions are available. And IR lighting can be integrated. In this particular example, it's an external camera 
with a housing and a bracket and you can see the IR surrounding the lens. Static dome cameras. Much like a bullet camera, static dome camera has the camera and lens integrated, so again, there's no compatibility issues. Similarly, we can have fixed or very focal lens options, and there are also internal and external versions available. IR light can also be integrated. This particular image is of an internal camera, but they are available in external formats. PTZ dome cameras. Again, when you buy them, the camera and lens is integrated, so there's no compatibility issues. But now we have zoom lenses as opposed to fixed focal length or very focal length lenses. Internal and external versions are available, and wiper and infrared light options are also available. The image on the left is a type of camera that you might find in within a shopping mall. The image on the right is a camera a bit more ruggedized, which you may find in a commercial site or even in a, a town center scheme. You can just see the wiper at the bottom of the glass, and it's also got infrared lights and white lights as well. A monochrome camera. Well, a monochrome camera would produce a black and white image all the time. Originally, all cameras are monochrome to allow them to work in low light levels. A colour camera produces a colour image all the time. However, advances in sensor technology now allow colour cameras to work to a much better, work much better in low light. These days, we do tend to use an awful lot of colour mono or day-night cameras, often referred to as TDM, true day-night. A colour image during the day automatically switching to monochrome at night. Best of both worlds, high quality colour images during the day, good low light performance and possibility to supplement lighting with infrared. The camera technologies. Well, traditionally we've had standard definition analogue, but it has a relatively low resolution and the manufacture of them now is largely discontinued. IP cameras, an IP camera will give us a much higher resolution than standard definition analog, and the ability, of course, to transmit the images over IT networks. HDSDI, high definition serial digital interface. It's technology that came around about 10 years ago, and it was our first opportunity to experience high definition images over coaxial transmission. Unfortunately, there were some limited distance capabilities associated with it, and also very large storage requirements. About five years ago, HD analog arrived. And there are three versions of HD analog. HD TVI, which is high definition transport video interface. HD CVI, which is high definition composite video interface and AHD, which is just referred to as analog high definition. Now, depending on who you buy the equipment from, the different manufacturers will use one of those three platforms. All technologies are backwardly compatible with standard definition analog. But now, all the inter-technology compatibilities issues have been resolved. For a, a period of time, if you bought an HD TVI camera, you had to have an HD TVI recorder to receive it. CVI, CVI, HD, HD. They now have some kind of agreement in place which allows all technologies to be viewed on all platforms. So we talked about the camera evolution. We talked about the image sensors and their sizes. We also talked about the different camera types, box cameras, bullet cameras, static domes, PTZ domes, etc. And then we've just talked about the camera technologies, the HD TVI, CVI, AHD, uh, HD SDI, IP standard definition, and so on and so forth. This brings us to the end of this podcast. I hope you found it useful. Thank you and goodbye.